Hello geographers, this is a Geography Talk Through. Today we're going to look through a nine mark synoptic question. This question is from the hazard section of the AQA A-level sample assessment material paper one. So looking at this question, assess the importance of factors in globalisation in supporting the response to major seismic hazards. So as always we'll have a look at exam technique and then we'll have a look at a model answer. So just to make this really clear, this type of question is the synoptic element of your paper. It will come in section C in both papers, whether it's question 6 or question 7 in the A-level, it depends and you'll need to look very carefully at the wording of the question and try and see which one is the synoptic question. So when we're talking about these nine mark questions in section C, you'll get three types. So one type um, will be getting you to make connections within that same topic. Um, so, sorry to do this out of order, but this is this one, number two. So, for example, in hazards, you might be looking at whether there's a connection between volcanic hazard response and seismic hazard response or something like that. Um, or you might have a question, question number three here, um, where you're looking at a resource and you're assessing and analysing a resource. So, essentially, a figure assess question very similar to a six mark figure assess but nine marks available uh, but the one we're going to talk about today is this one number one this is where we make connections between different topics of study we call this being synoptic so it might be that you're looking at links between hazards and globalization or possibly hazards and changing places when considering the physical paper so this is the one we're going to look at today um, hopefully I'll show you a few ways of answering it or certainly one way of answering this type of question so just to confirm, four marks for AO1, five marks for AO2. If you're not sure about the difference between AO1 and AO2, have a look at the video that talks through the structure of a paper and that should become a little bit clearer. So I've created a few golden rules, rules that will help you evaluate in these nine mark questions. So first of all, uh, make sure you answer all parts of the question, so have a look at the wording. Uh, number two, make sure you include AO1, so that might be key theory, processes and knowledge. That's something you're going to need to actively work into your essays. Uh, number three, evaluate. Make sure you have counter arguments or counterpoints. And it might be that you want to evaluate either in your conclusion or somewhere within your essay on at least one of the following. So something to do with scale. So is it different on a local scale, regional scale, national scale? Will it be different in the future? Is it something that can be kept up or are there different levels of severity? Something that shows you're going beyond the obvious answer. And really importantly, make sure you have a strong overall conclusion to answer the question at hand. So let's break down the question we want to look at today. So this question, assess the importance of factors in globalization and then in supporting the response to major seismic hazards. A really common mistake is to consider this question just in terms of globalization. I've seen many a response that compare a globalized country with a country that's not as globalized. So essentially doing switched on versus switched off and saying that a switched on country is better able to respond to disasters than a switched off country. Now that's not what this question's asking because if you answer that question you end up really saying about a developed country versus a developing country. So an LIC versus an NIC. And that, although might be relevant, and you'll see later on it is relevant, um, if you word it such, um, it won't be perfect. So we need to understand that it means factors in globalization. So pick some factors in globalization and assess whether they are important in supporting the response to major seismic hazards. So factors such as improved communication and speed of communication, factors such as improved transportation or a greater degree of uh, cooperation between um, IGOs, NGOs and governments um, together. They are factors of globalization. So in order to answer this question, I'm going to pick out a couple of these factors of globalization and I'm going to comment and I'm going to assess on how well they support responses to major disasters. So I am going to talk about a HIC, I'm going to talk about Japan, um, but I'm not going to say it's all because it's a HIC. I'm going to discuss improved communication and um, 
technology, so looking at things like earthquake proof technology and improved communication such as apps that warn you against impending seismic hazards, um, tsunamis and ground shaking and then I'm also going to consider Haiti and talk about improved communication between NGOs, IGOs and so on and so forth and um, also talk about international transportation of goods in the support of aid post disaster. So hopefully that will become clear when considering my answer. Um, these sort of rules at the bottom um, similar to the things we discussed before just broken down to make them a bit shorter. Um, make sure you assess and answer all parts of the question. If it's an assess question make sure you, you really do that and you come to a strong conclusion and be clear and be sure to evaluate somewhere within your answer offering counterpoints and then obviously do not forget AO1 processes theory examples where possible and for this question I cannot stress it enough remember this is not a globalized versus not globalized country if there is such thing and it certainly isn't a developed versus developing we want to focus on factors of globalization it links between global governance and hazards synopticity so in terms of a structure uh, my answer is going to follow something like this um, ignore this bit I just noticed a, a major error um, you'll see my intro in a minute however the rest of it um, it is accurate that is what I'm going to follow so feel free to pause and have a look at that don't pay too much attention to the intro um, this is where we're at though this is my answer um, as always feel free to pause and uh, the mark scheme will come a little later in the video so you can skip forward and skip back um, have a look through and in a minute I'm going to point out hopefully um, where I'm picking up some AO1 and some AO2 marks so first of all in terms of technique in my intro I've tried to make it very very clear that I understand um, the question I understand factors such as globalization linking to seismic hazards I'm showing that I understand it's a synoptic question and I understand I'm not just talking about globalization as a concept as a whole I then quite happy to give headings to my paragraphs I think it makes it clear so first paragraph improved communication and technology is a factor promoting globalization that can also support the response to seismic hazards I want to make it absolutely clear to the examiner that I understand what this question is about um, I then go on to explain um, how technology and communication can help the pre-disaster and immediate response um, when considering things like the disaster management cycle so hopefully a little bit of AO1 putting it into context by talking about Japan and talking about how big the earthquake was and the 60 second warning from the primary seismic waves uh, that enabled people to get to safety and limited the, um, the deaths uh, from the initial ground shaking. I've talked about smartphone technology and talked about earthquake proof buildings such as SkyTree and how they support the response because that's what the question is about to major seismic hazards um, as you can see I've indented my evaluation I don't want the examiner to miss it I've also used the word evaluation I, I really want it clear that I'm doing that and I've gone on to say that all of this technology in Japan um, didn't really um, prevent and help the response to the tsunami which was a secondary hazard from this earthquake the reason being because the physical nature of the tsunami was so large in scale that it's very difficult to protect against that even with these factors of globalization I then move on and talk about Haiti and talk about how um, aid as a response from IGOs and NGOs it's quite a useful way of responding to a major seismic hazard improved transport technology means we can transfer goods around the world within 24 48 hours again I've tried to show some AO1 to understand the earthquakes understand location and then I'm generating an argument. My argument is that transport technology does help with inter international cooperation and the ability to um, have search and rescue workers uh, on the ground very quickly. But once again, um, I've evaluated and with Haiti, I've talked about how poor infrastructure due to lack of development meant that the single runway uh, meant it was very difficult to unload the planes. They ended up uh, backing up and some of them diverting back to places like Miami therefore the effectiveness of improved transport technology isn't isn't complete um, because levels of development within a country might prevent that factor uh, from um, supporting an effective response 
Then, in my conclusion, um, I've tried to make it clear that I think facts of development do play a key role. I think that's clear from the essay. However, um, there are other factors such as the physical nature and the development of the area. The physical nature of the disaster might also affect um, the response or the success of the response to a major seismic hazard. So, as always, um, I'll flick through to the mark scheme so you can have a look through from that and have a look back to the answer. Uh, but as always, I've tried to write it uh, in the time frame. Um, as always, from reading back, I'm sure there's things that could be added to make it stronger. Uh, but overall, I think that's largely a strong response that covers all of these elements required to get into a level three. Uh, where it is within that level three, that's certainly open for debate. Any questions, please ask. Thank you. Bye-bye.